Welcome to my Silent Hill 2 adventure. This is the first horror game I've ever played from start to finish in a single sitting. As a child, I was deathly afraid of anything remotely scary, spending my hours playing Kingdom Hearts on my PS2 instead. I have two vivid childhood memories that still haunt me. Asking my mom for a zombie game, only to have her return Resident Evil 4 because it was way too scary, and the flea market stand in Mexico that always had a copy of Silent Hill shatter memories. That little girl on the cover scared the heck out of me every time I walked by. But today, at 23, with the upcoming Silent Hill 2 remake releasing in October 2024, I decided it was finally time to face my fears. A friend who's obsessed with the series guided me to the light and convinced me to play Silent Hill 2. With the remake only a few months away, I wanted to understand the enduring love and dedication of Silent Hill fans, who have weathered many lackluster games in Silent Hill 4, The Room, and the heartbreaking cancellation of Silent Hills. The playable teaser became a keystone in horror gaming despite never becoming a full game. And now, with Silent Hill 2, Considered the best and most beloved of the series, getting a remake, there is a mix of excitement and concern about the changes Konami and the blooper team are making. As a completely new player, I am diving into Silent Hill 2 to see what made this game so iconic back in 2001. In this video, I will share my first impressions and conclude with my thoughts on whether the changes in the remake will diminish the experience. Let's get started. After pressing start on my first Silent Hill 2 playthrough, the first thing that struck me was how cinematic the opening shot felt. Seeing James in the bathroom, with the camera starting at the urinal and rotating to get an up and close shot, it almost seemed like we were creeping on him. For a PS2 game from 2001, the graphics look fantastic. Even though it's CGI and not in-game engine footage, the character models have a sense of greediness and depth. Whether it's James alone at the beginning, him with Angela, or later scenes, the graphics never pushed me away. They allowed me to immerse myself more deeply. Having struggled with the unplayable controls of Silent Hill 1, I expected Silent Hill 2's controls to be better. Although they felt a bit clunky at first, and it took me some time to get used to the fixed camera angles, I eventually got the hang of it. There really was only one moment when I kept going in and out of the same gate on my way to get the radio. I seemed to be stuck in a loop until I slowed down and thought about where I was going. I expected the game to feel dated, thinking that many people enjoyed it purely for nostalgia. In reality, as I played more and more, some of the mechanics, likely in place due to hardware limitations from the PS2, actually complemented the experience. Silent Hill 2's mechanics and shortcomings blend in such a way that they feel future-proof. I didn't have high expectations going into Silent Hill 2. I knew a little bit about the combat and the iconic fog, but not much else. However, I was genuinely excited to experience the game, given its history and significance. Accepting that the game might feel a little clunky due to its age, I was not disappointed at all. In fact, Silent Hill 2 exceeded any expectations I had. In order to break down Silent Hill further, I want to look at the five major areas in the game. The first are the apartments. This is the first close quarters area where you encounter your first puzzle involving three different coins that you pick up along the way. This section really teaches you that you can't just run through the game as fast as possible and that almost every item you pick up can have some sort of use. If you try to rush through it, it can really cost you to get stuck and the longer you try to figure it out, the more the game creeps into the back of your head, causing you that fear and stress. The second area is the hospital. To me, this is one of the heftiest with multiple floors and rooms. I love the hospital puzzle because it layers in lore from a character you never actually meet, guided by messages from someone held there seemingly going insane. The hospital significance to the story becomes more and more apparent as you progress, but I won't really be spoiling a lot of the story today. Three, kinda. Silent Hill Historical Society and the prison. The historical society serves as an entrance to the prison. On your way to the society, you have to re-enter the now pitch black town, which kinda heightens the creepiness factor of everything. The prison feels large, but is quicker to complete than the hospital. Despite fewer enemies, the sense of unease is constant, especially when entering cells. After solving the prison puzzle, James descends through holes into the labyrinth. The labyrinth. This area is my favorite. The descent through holes into a maze that writes its own map keeps you on edge. The deeper layers of the section are fascinating, culminating in the fight with Abstract Daddy. Yeah, Abstract Daddy. Although, not the toughest boss, the room's ambience is weird, but cool. See, boss fights in Silent Hill 2 are in small, claustrophobic rooms. Again, likely due to the PS2 hardware limitations. But this enhances the sense of claustrophobia and really forces up close combat, having you constantly move and not really just smash through the bosses. You can really learn to appreciate the art style, the enemy you're fighting, your surroundings. The final area 
of the game, Lakeview Hotel. Let me tell you something. This final area is a masterclass in game design. Rowing across the lake, the story revelations, and the buildup of tension make you eager to understand what's happening. By this point, I was comfortable with the fixed camera angles and controls. And to me, the fixed camera, though, occasionally frustrating is utilized to get into your psyche, making you question everything constantly. There's never a moment to relax as you open a new door. Will there be an enemy there? Do I have to quickly dodge? I don't know, but that's what's fun. Let's briefly talk about the story and the characters. Silent Hill 2, at its core, is the story of James Sunderland, searching for his wife, Mary, who died three years ago in front of his eyes. Along the way, James encounters several characters drawn to Silent Hill for their own reasons. These include Laura, a young girl who claims to know Mary, Maria, who closely resembles your deceased wife Mary, Angela Orozco, a woman looking for her mother, and Eddie, a troubled young man always dodging questions. James, Maria, and Laura's stories are interconnected the most, while Angela and Eddie navigate their personal journeys, revealing bits of their stories through cutscenes and news clippings. Each character represents different aspects of the psyche, adding depth to a narrative. I believe that part of the game's enjoyment comes from interpreting these characters' meanings yourself. If you aren't able to play the game, there are many YouTube videos with various interpretations. I plan to discuss what each character means to me in the future, so if you're interested, be sure to like and subscribe to let me know. Overall, the story, though simple, comes together beautifully with multiple endings, each offering a different perspective on James' future. Therefore, the game encourages you to delve deep into the narrative. Silent Hill 2 makes you care about the characters without lengthy exposition. You want to discover the truth about Angela and help Eddie. Laura, who seems to torment you, serves a crucial role in James' story, and understanding her motivations adds to the game's depth. I'll refrain from discussing Maria in detail to avoid spoilers, as she is a key piece in the story. Regarding my experience with horror gaming, I'm not the most versed in horror games. The last one I played from start to finish was the Resident Evil 4 Remake, which I absolutely loved. And I've also played PT, though I've never completed it. Horror has never been my go-to genre, but Silent Hill 2 isn't like any horror game I've briefly played or watched others play. From the get-go, I braced myself for jump scares. However, Silent Hill doesn't rely on them. To me, it feels like a web, becoming so entangled that turning back seems impossible. And at the same time, it instills a strong sense of urgency. I felt compelled to get out and finish the game, and now that I'm out, I keep wanting to go back in. I want to take a second to reflect on the community and some of the remake concerns. The Silent Hill community is unlike any other. Recently, TikTok has made the game a bit more popular, bringing in new players constantly. But when you compare Silent Hill to other series like Kingdom Hearts, it's clear the two communities are vastly different. Silent Hill fans are deeply invested in the lore and story, even though it's not as complex and convoluted as Kingdom Hearts. Both series have been around for a similar amount of time and have faced turbulent sequels that didn't meet expectations. However, the content and community around Silent Hill 2 continue to push the conversation forward. While Kingdom Hearts is complex and convoluted, it really inspires in-depth video essays about character depth or thematic meanings. As an adult, I find myself more captivated by Silent Hill's lore. Silent Hill 2's community is active and passionate, constantly dissecting and discussing the game's themes and characters. The Silent Hill community has valid concerns about the upcoming remake. I believe that they are justified. As a new player and now a fan of the series, I've come to understand what gives Silent Hill 2 its charm and character. The fixed camera angle, for example, is crucial to the experience. Removing it in the remake almost feels like a red flag, and updating character models and changing key aspects, such as Maria's outfits, seem unnecessary and completely missing the point of why the original did what it did. To me, it kind of appears that Konami is trying to appeal to a more casual audience and make a lot of the themes that make Silent Hill 2, Silent Hill 2 a lot more digestible for people and takes away the fun of you getting your own experience to realize these things and make your own connections in your mind. These changes might capture new players and interest longtime fans, but the game is beloved as it is. Longtime fans appreciate the game's original elements, which contribute to its unique atmosphere. Many believe that Silent Hill 1 should have been remade first, as it's often skipped due to its outdated controls, which I agree. I would have enjoyed a Silent Hill 1 remake. Why not start from the beginning? Additionally, the audio design in Silent Hill 2 is one of the best. Akira Yamaoka's soundtrack is a vital part of the Silent Hill 2 identity. I know they're changing it with him still at the helm, so I'm excited to hear what these changes will sound like and hopefully they are more of what we already love. Overall, changing too much risks losing what makes the game so special. 
As I reflect on my experience with Silent Hill 2, one thought dominated my mind right after I was done with my gameplay. I have to play it again. The game completely grasps you. Much like James and the others are drawn to Silent Hill, so will you. Today, I'm more open to playing more horror games, especially psychological horror. However, I'm also fortunate that I get to experience Silent Hill 3 and 4 for the first time, so I'll likely be doing that next. Thank you for joining me on this journey through Silent Hill 2. Playing this game for the first time in 2024 has been an incredible experience and it's easy to see why it remains a beloved classic. The atmosphere, the story, and the unique mechanics all come together to create something truly, truly special. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any thoughts or experiences with Silent Hill 2, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. As we wait for the Silent Hill 2 remake, let's keep the conversation going. Whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer like me, there's always something new to discover in this haunting town. Until next time, stay safe and remember to always face your fears. Mary.